Uh, Barsha. Yeah. So when did you go pro? Went pro in 09. So you've been in the game for 11 years. Talk to me about the state of moto in 2020. The state of moto right now is a little bit crazy, man. You know, we're racing without fans, which is not cool. The pro motocross season only has two rounds right now. So hopefully they pick that up. But like, yeah, racing's crazy. I think the field's, you know, as stocked as it ever been. And there's the least rides there's ever been. So all in all, the sport seems a little sketchy right now. But, uh, you know, we're lucky to be here at Salt Lake Racing. So I can't complain at all, but it's definitely Definitely weird times right now. It's just the Barsha. We're out here trout fishing. We're in Park City, day off. How you feeling? Oh man, I'm almost never felt better. So happy to uh, have a day off. Uh, it's been a rough one so far here in Salt Lake, but this is uh, this definitely makes up for it. Doing a little fly fishing, just enjoying the day, a little recovery day. So this is this is wicked. Little moto therapy. Oh man, this is some therapy if I know any man. Salt Lake sick. Park City badass. Can. Uh, couldn't be happier, honestly. Talk to me about Justin Barsha in 2020. Oh man, you know, it's been, um, it's been a crazy year. Um, started out with a bang, won the first race, and then, you know, on the podium a lot in, in championship contention, the whole coronavirus happens, and you know, we, uh, we get all this time off, and then come out here to Salt Lake, you know, I had really, you know, high hopes, and I felt like I should have been right in it, and I've just struggled really bad with like the bike a little bit, and you know some bad luck and just haven't been really vibing on the track which um it's kind of been unfortunate like you know some people would be stoked with eighth ninth and tenths but it's been uh it's been really frustrating man same stadium different track talk to me about rice Eccles stadium and the track you know I, I you know i love salt lake i think it's a great place i could see myself living here honestly like it's a beautiful beautiful place the mountains um the dirt though the dirt is probably the worst dirt possible it's been <laughs> mind-blowing struggling for me and then dude talking about the struggle what about that ghost ride crash round 14 <laughs> through the whoops take me through that i got booked in the in the whoops and uh, it was it was brutal man i got whiskey throttle and the bike went flying and unfortunately i like blew my front wheel completely off the forks so i couldn't finish the race which was a complete bummer because i've been like you know consistent and not out of any races or no dnf so like i said we got two more races left keep around two, get some better starts and, and put it up front. So you and Anderson are sort of like been going back and forth. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure we're gonna be battling the next couple of rounds. Definitely would like to, you know, get fourth in the championship. That That's, you know, the only goal at hand right now because I'm out of the championship. It's crazy, you know, I'm battling with, uh, you know, the champion from two years ago for fourth place. So, I mean, it can't, can't be that bad of a year. So before the race has sort of got canceled this year, you had a pretty good run in with Tomac. <laughs> Guys, you guys squash beef? What's the vibe with Tomac? <laughs> no, you know, me and Eli, we've always like been fine. You know, Eli does his thing, I do my thing. Um, <laughs> we definitely somehow find each other on the track all the time, and you know, we're I don't I don't really think we have any any beef really. You know, it's just uh, you know you get into it with people on the track sometimes. Obviously, we had that big blow up in Atlanta. Um, tensions were high, but uh, you know, as racers, I think me and him squash that right away like obviously people always like want to run with a story or something but there was no story there it was just you know racing so i should stop running the story <laughs> yeah, dude you need to quit running the story bro so barsha the 2020 west coast 250 class i mean it's your style they're bumping and grinding yeah they're going for a championship they're sending it i, I think they need to be more reckless uh <laughs> i think they should smash harder man like I don't know. I was I was super reckless when I was on 250. So um, obviously, like I didn't make a lot of friends. But um, definitely, as you get older, you mature. But yeah, I think the boys need to send it hard. There's only two races left, so I hope they they really go after it. So Ferrandez or Forkner, who do you think's gonna take it? Oh man, dude, come on. I uh, I don't know. I mean, I think whoever just saw someone's front end off harder is gonna take it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth, man. And don't don't mind my bad interview right now. I'm just so focused on the focus on the fishing. Yeah, at the end of 2020, your contract's up with Factory Yamaha, correct? Yeah, that is correct. What's the plan? 
you know, at the moment there's no plan. There's, um, you know, there's not a lot of rides out there. So um, for me, obviously I need to put my best foot forward. I've proven that I can win races and, you know, be on the podium and be consistent. So I hope someone sees that and, you know, wants to do this thing with me. <laughs> I've been a, a monster guy for a really long time. So I think uh, obviously no matter what, I want to stay with monster. My career, don't get me wrong, it's been great, but I've had a lot of, a lot of highs and a lot of lows. Oh, bro, the struggle's real, boys. Damn, anything else you want to touch on? Yeah, I want to touch on some trout right now. <laughs> hey, we just hit. Salt Lake cuts 15, we're fishing. That's awesome, dude. That's a pretty fish.